Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for August 30th, 2021. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. Uh, my name is Scott, and I work on CircuitPython for Adafruit. I just realized my headphone cord was zipped into my hoodie. Um, CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them in CircuitPython, per consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the, the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the hashtag CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. If the meeting time is changed, we'll notify you via Discord. If you wish to be notified about changes to the meeting, we can add you to the at CircuitPythonistas Discord role. Uh, there's also a calendar available that we try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. Speaking of which, next week will be on Tuesday and not on Monday because Monday is a U.S. holiday. So next week applies to this. Uh, we'll be meeting on Tuesday, not Monday. I'll say it again. Uh, this meeting is recorded. We record the audio from the voice channel and the video the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you're still welcome to participate by adding to the notes doc. The video of this meeting will be posted to YouTube and the audio is released as a podcast. If you find this podcast is not available on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. Uh, there is a notes doc to accompany the meeting and recording. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document, and we'll read them off during the meeting. The notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you use the doc to view only. So you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. A link to the notes document is posted in the CircuitPython Dev cha channel on the Adafruit Discord every week. Check the pinned messages to find the, la the latest notes doc. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It is a preview of our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a st statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from what we're, we've all been up to. The third is Hug Reports. Uh, Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the, folk, the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth part is In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. Uh, with that, I will get started with community news. And I will take a time code for, before I do that. So this is community, community news. The first item we have on community night community news oh hello monday morning uh is building with circuit python podcast the real python podcast presents building with circuit python and constraints of python for microcontrollers with the lead developer of circuit python with scott shawcroft at adafruit that's myself uh you can check it out at realpython.com slash podcasts slash rpp slash 75 uh and the the pitch or the description of this goes, uh, can you make a version of Python that fits within the memory constraints of a microcontroller and have it still feel like Python? That is the intention behind CircuitPython. This week on the show, we have Scott Shawcroft, who is the project lead for CircuitPython. We talk about all things CircuitPython while working with the language on several projects. I've developed many of my own questions to ask Scott. Scott answers my questions about bootloaders, packages, the bundle, and Bluetooth low energy, BLE. He also talks about the struggle of fitting the language and board-specific libraries within tiny memory constraints. We dis pro discuss projects and boards for beginners and many resources to learn from, learn more. All right, next up in community news, uh, Linux turns 30. On August 25th, Linux, the ubiquitous operating system, turned 30 years old. Dated uh, from a postgraduate student, Linus Torvalds posted on the comp Dot OS dot Linux news group, and there's a link to the Adafruit blog about it. Uh, it says Linux turns 30. Uh, this is from ZDNet. Uh, Linux 
Linux turns 30, Linus Torvalds on his Just a Hobby operating system, an interview with Linus Torvalds. All right, next up. Um, Arduino embraces uh, Python. Power of Python for RP Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect and the Nano 33B Elite. It's a link to the Arduino blog. Uh, and there's a link to the Adafruit coverage as well. Uh, quote, Python support for three of the hottest Arduino boards out there is now yours. Uh, through our partnership with OpenMV and the Nano RP2040 Connect, Nano 33B Elite, and the Nano 33B Elite Sense can now be programmed with the popular MicroPython language. Next up. Halloween Hackfest. Join Hackaday, DigiKey, and Adafruit for a Halloween-themed contest. They want to see your crazy, creepy, ghostly, spooky, and awesome projects. If costumes are your favorite part of Halloween, then why not dress up your outfit with some hacked upgrades? You could even design a ghoulish prop to add to your home's Halloween decor or light up a jack-o'-lantern with LEDs. Whether it's technical, artistic, or just plain terrifying, Hackaday wants to see your projects. Check out the Halloween show and tell with Hackaday Friday, October 29th at 1 p.m. Pacific to show off your awesome projects entered in the contest. Don't forget to also share your projects on social media and use the hashtag Halloween Hackfest. Hackaday and DigiKey have partnered on this Halloween themed contest to offer three winners an online shopping spree to the DigiKey warehouse. With links there to Hackaday and Hackaday.io. Next up, uh, 10 beginning circuit Python education courses. Uh, Professor John Gallagher has released 10 new CircuitPython school videos for his fall course. They are tutorials for beginners. The first videos use the Adafruit Circuit Playground Bluefruit slash Express. He states the videos are free to share with educators and newbies. Check out the first video on YouTube, uh, which describes the series, and see the whole playlist. And uh, thank you to Foamy Guy for putting the links in the Discord chat. Okay, Whew. we were through the news. Uh, this all comes as a preview for the newsletter. The CircuitPython weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, Edit next week's draft on GitHub. Uh, go to the github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython dash weekly dash newsletter and check the drafts folder there. Uh, you can submit a pull request with the changes or you may also tweet, tweet, tag a tweet with hashtag circuitpython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And that's it for community news. Uh, next up, we have state of circuitpython libraries in Blinka. Uh, this is a statistical overview of the health of the project, and it's broken down by the major components of CircuitPython overall. Um, so, overall... <laughs> I can't type this morning, apparently. I don't know. There it is. Uh, couldn't find my colon. Okay. Uh, overall, we had 54 pull requests merged from 19 different authors, so thank you to everybody who contributed. Um... I think all of these names I do recognize uh, previously. Maybe Warmbit is new, so thank you to Warmbit, and thanks to all of our authors. We had 12 reviewers, so thank you to all of our reviewers. Uh, you help us uh, support all of these authors, so we really appreciate it. Um, Issues-wise, we had 42 closed issues by 11 people, 21 opened by 16 people, so we're down 21, which is awesome. Um, so those are the stats for overall. Uh, for the core, we had 41 pull requests merged from 16 different authors. So thank you to, again to all of our uh, authors and reviewers. We had eight reviewers for those 16 authors. So thank you to all of our reviewers on the core. I think uh, eight reviewers is actually a bit more than we normally have. So that's awesome. Uh, we have eight open pull requests as of these stats. Uh, the two oldest are 37 and 23 days old. So not too bad. Everything besides that is three days or less. So we're, we're cruising through stuff, which is awesome. Uh, we've been making a lot of progress, and I'll talk about that just in just a bit. 
Issues-wise for the core, we had 29 closed issues by 6 people, 14 opened by 9 people, so we're net down 15 uh, still, which is awesome. We have 415 open issues. We have uh, 6 active milestones. The main ones are, or the main things to note here is that we have 5 issues not assigned to milestones, so those need to be triaged. And we have 4 open issues under 7.0.0, which is the, the ones that we want to close before we do a release candidate. Uh, speaking of which, overall, we're very close to release candidate. Uh, we'll do it this week, uh, barring any catastrophic bugs that I cannot fix. Um, so expect to see that. Uh, we really want to push to get 7.0 out the door because 6.3 is aging. Uh, there's lots of, lots of good fixes in 7.0. So with that, uh, let's kick it over to Katni for the library update. Didn't even realize you'd gotten through the core. I was writing up my library update. <laughs> Sorry. Right, I'm cruising. Um, I'm cruising here. You are. So we had, this applies to all the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries. That's everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras, such as our cookie cutter and uh, the community bundle. Um, so all this information applies to all of those repositories. Uh, there were 13 pull requests merged by eight authors and eight reviewers. Uh that's leaving 54 open pull requests. We had 12 issues closed by seven people and five open by five people. So that left us with 340 open issues. Uh, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had one new library, the ST7565, and a number of updated libraries that I will not read off. Um, if you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, go to circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more open pull requests, open issues, and library infrastructure issues. Um, take a look at the open issues list, see if anything uh, strikes your fancy. Um, leave a comment if you're going to work on it. Uh, in terms of uh, reviewing, reviewing is a great way to participate. Um, it's super helpful to us because as Scott stated earlier, the more reviewers we have, the more authors we can support. Um, to start reviewing, uh, take a look at the at open PRs, and if you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, um, feel free to check it for syntax uh, or um, simply check the code and leave a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, and if it looks good to you, let us know. That is super helpful. Um, and it's a great way to get started uh, with reviewing. And once you're comfortable with that, we can look at adding you to our review team. Um, so overall, we're continuing to see new libraries and updates to the libraries being added every week. Something that occurred to me uh, because of the Halloween Hackfest uh, section of the community news was with Hacktoberfest being imminent, I would like to put a call out to folks who are interested in helping us go through the library issues list and labeling good first issues as such as we head into October, when our good friend Adabot automatically adds the Hacktoberfest tag to good first issue labeled issues. As stated earlier, um, as of this meeting, there are 340 issues to go through. Three are currently labeled as good first issue, but if I remember correctly, they're not really well labeled, so we should consider updating those as well. Further, those that are similar, or for those that are familiar with the libraries, it would be greatly appreciated if we could identify issues that haven't been filed that fit the good first issue label, docs, updates, etc. While this is ostensibly being done under the blanket of Hacktoberfest, it's something I've been trying to do for a long time. So it's worth doing regardless of the reason. Um, the having good having good first issue labeled issues makes it a lot. Uh, it lowers the barrier for folks who are new to all of this and want to contribute. And right now we have been woefully lacking in um, keeping that particular label uh, well applied. So um, if anybody's interested in helping out with this. Uh, it would be super appreciated. Um, I can walk you through what it is that we're looking for in terms of a good first issue and um, have you uh, go through, because the issues are all on circuitpython.org slash contributing. Um, so it's all aggregated in one place. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's what I've got for library updates. Awesome. Thank you, Hatney. All right. Next up, uh, let's check in with Melissa about Blinka. Hello. So for Blinka, we had not much activity this last week. We had zero pull requests merge. Uh, there are currently three open pull requests among all the different repositories. Oh, I forgot to say, 
Uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Um, and to continue, we had one closed issue by one person and two open by two people, leaving a net of 62 open issues. There were 9,598 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are now up to 76 boards. And that's it. <laughs> Dave is asking, how did it get the name Blinka? I have no idea, to be honest. <laughs> it, 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 originated... it was like that before I started working on it. Yeah, it originated when it was first created to be a layer on top of MicroPython. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think when Lamore contracted Nick to do that work, she called it Blinka. <laughs> okay, I don't know if the snake or the... the um... Blinka package came about being named first. So I think I think the 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 snake was named Blinka before the package. Ah, so okay. I'm not entirely sure why we copied the name, but that's the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, that, that's the history of Blinka. Uh, okay. So thank you, Melissa, uh, and thanks, Dave, for the question. Uh, next up, we have hug reports. Uh. Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you to folks in our community for all of the awesome work they've been doing. Uh, I'll go through the folks in the notes talk here, and we'll uh, if you say no mic or text only, I'll read it off for you. Otherwise, I'll expect you to unmute. Um, so I'll go first. So uh, for me, uh, two Hug Reports. One to Jeff Epler for code debugging with me last week. We spent like three intense hours debugging on Thursday and figured out the, the mag tag crash. And uh, hug report to David Glad for, for filing that issue. It's quite the doozy. And then thank you to Ivan, IGRR, for letting us stag him to talk about the hanging read. We found an address on the ESP32S2 where when we read the address, uh, the microcontroller stops <laughs> and then has to be reset. So thanks to those folks. And let me scroll up. Uh, Next up, we have uh, from Anne, uh, Group Hug. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Scott. Uh, first hug is to you and Jeff for collaborating to figure out that bug on the mag tag. Uh, that definitely seemed like quite the doozy. Um, it was definitely interesting as well to see the explanation of it on Deep Dive uh, also. Uh, next up to the GitHub user Aris Bone for creating a test script that tries out various sizes of the gauge widget and it tries to find uh, which ones, if any, suffer from a bug that's relating to the way that it gets filled in. And then lastly, I just have a, a group hug for everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy guy. All right. Next up is Jerry. Yeah, hi. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, thanks to, to Brent and, uh, and I'm not sure who else is involved. In, in all the development work on the whippersnapper project. It's been, been fun to play with. Yeah, I think Lauren is the other person. L-O-R-E-N uh, is also working on that a lot, too. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, next up is Katni. All right, so my first tag report is to Jeff for a lovely chat next week uh, ahead of um, him being out for a bit. Uh, to Dave P for helping me with cleaning up an image in Photoshop. Um, that was last week. I put, it was a shot in the dark, uh, and I had a cleaned up image back uh, before the end of the meeting. <laughs> that was excellent. Um, to Foamy Guy for adding divider lines to grid layout in the display IO layout library. I will be testing that, um, this week. Uh, to Naradoc for helping me improve my audio pin script, and therefore, once I update the rest of them, all of my pin finding scripts to better exclude unexposed pin names. And to Keith the EE for joining the CircuitPython helpers role on Discord and for working towards joining the CircuitPython librarians review team. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. Uh, next up, we have text from Keith the EE who says, a hug report to Katni for helping me figure out the CircuitPython helper's role, as well as the other helpers for answering my questions. Hug report to Jeff and Scott for figuring out the ESP32-S2 bug. The fix works on my Metro, 30, Metro ESP32-S2. And everyone for being awesome and helping me with random questions. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa. Uh, 
Uh, hello, I just had a group hug for everyone, and that's it. Awesome, thanks, Melissa. And last up, we have notes from Naradoc, who says, Hug report to ask Patrick W. for digging into and merging Circup PRs. Uh, hug report to D. Griswo on GitHub for Circup, P- Circup PRs. And everyone fixing bugs as 7.0 is approaching. And that's it for hug reports. Next up is status updates. And I should have said that this is done as a round robin, but we're uh, practiced at it. Um, This is a chance for us to spend a a minute or two talking about what we were working on in the previous week and what we plan on working on in the coming week. Um, And as the last, as as I did in Hug Reports, I will start and then we'll go through the list. So I spent most of last week bug hunting, including the Magtag Watchdog Timer crash. Uh, also tweaked the BLE API to recursively delete and not reload immediately after a write, so that's checked in. Uh, this week I'll be bug hunting if anything came up over the weekend. Uh, the release candidate, and then release the release candidate this week, hopefully. I've got to look at the BLE UART example slash code that break with the Nordic UART service on CircuitPython. Uh, my plan is to actually change the CircuitPython workflow to not present as an Nordic UART service. Um, that'll be helpful because then we'll be able to have other characteristics for reading, like the board name and the uh, version number, for example. So that'll give us more flexibility in the long run. Um, Antonio is back from vacation starting tomorrow, so I'm going to check in with them and uh, work on the app side of things, in particular Glider. And uh, if I get through all that, I, I next on my list is I really want to play around with Raspberry Pi Tiny USB support as a prerequisite for supporting uh, CircuitPython uh, bare metal on the Raspberry Pis um, so that we can get display I.O. on TVs. So those are uh, what I am looking at doing this week. Next up, we have notes from Anne. Anne says, besides the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter, I'm using the new Adafruit MacroPad to make a, a random digit generator keypad similar to the Hirsch Scramble Pad high security system. I demonstrated the project on show and tell, and I should have a guide finished by Wednesday. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Uh, last week, I updated the uh, learn guide code for all the ones using pulse out uh, or all the ones that we can update so far uh, to use the new API. I made a, a repo in circuitpython.org for the gauge widget. Um, and while I was working on some examples, I noticed an issue with that. So I started debugging it. Um, I finished up a PR that I started a few weeks back, adding a new feature to the grid layout that lets you make divider lines between all of the content cells uh, very easily. So that's cool. Um, and then this week, I am going to keep going, trying to figure out the grid issue, uh, see if we can find a way to fill it that does not have the same problem. And then uh, the other thing I want to work on this week is uh, an update in cookie cutter um, to add a third option for the bundles. Right now, there's just two options for the bundles, and then uh, based on some other inputs, it kind of defaults to a different bundle. So mm-hmm. we'll make that choice more clear uh, so that all three of them are there. And that's what I got. Thanks. Thanks, family guy. All right, next up is Jerry. Hi, thanks. Let's see. So I've been playing around a lot last week with, these, with the OV2640 camera still on the ESP32S2 cell uh, uh, board. And they you know, made an example, copied Jeff's example over and converted it from to do the webcam. And it's been working, but there's always been this little glitch where sometimes it throws an extra byte in. So I, I made a really crude workaround that's been great. Uh, it, it actually is very stable now because I just, if the extra byte is there, I just throw it away. But it's not a long-term fix. I'm still trying to dig through the, the actual code and see if I understand where that byte's coming from, but not yet. And then I uh, also spent a fair amount of time playing with BrainCraft hat. I don't know if people are aware, you know, who have them. Every time the kernel updates on Raspberry Pi, there's a chance they break the F- FBCP uh, module. And so it had been pinned back to a pretty old kernel from last year. And so played around with some of the newer ones and found that you can upgrade to a, a newer kernel, um, the May 27th one, but that's the latest one that, that works. 
I'm still trying to understand why that is, but at least uh, some progress. And then um, there was a forum post where somebody ran into this funny issue where they were using an RFM9X Featherwing on an NRF52840 board, and it worked great under USB power, but it wouldn't 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 find the RFM9X board under battery power. Um, and they traced it down and found out it's because of the SPIM device that the thing defaults to on the first SPI device. For some reason, that one won't run under battery power. Um, but if you create a dummy SPI device first and then connect up so it picks the second one, it works fine. So really puzzled by that and want to look into it more. Um, I don't know if it's something you want to discuss in the weeds or if it, if it belongs here or not or at this point. Uh, we can discuss in the weeds. That's fine. Okay. So I'll, I don't I'll really have any ideas, but. <laughs> okay, I'll describe it a little more then. Cool. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jerry. Next up is Katni. All right. So last week I published the SCD 4X guide and tested the SCD 41 thoroughly on CircuitPython and Raspberry Pi. Um, I don't normally test this thoroughly, but uh, somebody reported in the forums um, not long before I started this guide that the SCD 30 was failing on their Raspberry Pi. Um, that was a red herring. Uh, it was long since determined there's something else going on there. Um, but I also tested the SCD 30 on Raspberry Pi and finally stopped after 60 hours of it running smoothly. Um, they reported it was typically failing within an hour, um, eight hours at the longest. So. Um, my concern was that I had published the SCD 30 guide with Raspberry Pi instructions. And if those were incorrect, I needed to, um, update that, uh, they're not incorrect. It turns out it's fine. Um, there's something else going on. So, um, FYI, if you're looking for, you know, CO2, uh, sensors, both the SCD 30 and the SCD 40 and 41 are excellent choices. Uh, for Arduino, CircuitPython, and Raspberry Pi. Um, I put the MP3 playback on RP2040 guide in moderation. Much noise was made in the process. <laughs> uh, the CircuitPython Essentials MP3 template was completed as part of this guide. I wrote a script to return a list of audio-capable pins, now with improved pin exclusion, and tested the IS31FL3741 LED matrix breakout. Uh, happy rainbows abound. Also, they seriously need to shorten that part number. <laughs> Um, so this week, um, for, for you, Scott, I'll provide any reviews needed for getting 7.0 into RC and stable, um, test the grid layout PR, uh, from foamy guy with the project that sparked the feature request in the first place. Um, it's my little GitHub, um, phrases, uh, macro pad, uh, needed dividing lines. Um, and so, uh, ideally. Um, that'll work well for that. Um, I need to get video for the MP3 guide. That's the final, uh, piece of, of publishing that guide is to get video of the MP3, what the MP3 sounds like when it plays so that folks know, uh, following that I'll be doing the INA 219 STEM QT rev guide update. That, uh, version of that board came out a long time ago, but managed to miss, um, us updating the guide. Um, this is not the case anymore, but um, actually I need to write the guide for um, the IS31 FL3741. Um, and then uh, once the MP3 guide is published, put together a quick guide for the, the PAM8302 breakout, which is a speaker amplifier. Um, and the reason we're waiting on the MP3 guide is that the um, Pico example in the MP3 guide is gonna get mirrored into that uh, as the example. So I'm just not duplicating work. Um, as well, I need to find out what might be required to port the OBS timestamp code from Linux to Mac OS and Windows um, to decide whether it's worth doing as a project. Because um, I don't think it's, it, I don't feel like it's worth writing a guide if we only have it working on one operating system. Um, it shouldn't be too bad, but it's a little outside my wheelhouse. So I will be um, asking for help there. And then uh, somebody requested a fritzing object for uh, one of our parts. And so I need to do that eventually. Um, this past weekend, I avoided working on something I should have been doing, secret project, I'll explain it when I can, um, which led me to begin organizing parts. 
that's how badly I was trying to avoid doing what I was supposed to be doing. Um, I stopped after a bit because it's work and I should be doing it during work, but it was still nice to get started. I've decided on a if I touch it, it gets organized approach to it in general, which if that's all I do will take almost literally forever to get everything organized. But at the rate I've been going, which is none, this approach will at least be a start. Um, it's also leading to slowly filling up my desk because if I don't have time to put it somewhere labeled, it stays on my desk. I swear I'll get to it soon. Um, that said, I'm curious, for those of you who do organize your microcontrollers and components, how do you organize them? And not so much what kind of containers you use as much as how do you categorize them? Um, if you have any kind of systems, let me know, because I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I want to organize everything. And that's my update. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. I feel your pain organizing stuff, <laughs> for sure. All right. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa. Uh, hello. Uh, first of all, uh, in response to Katni, I actually organized my boards by the uh, form factor. But uh, anyway, uh, last week I worked on a new CircuitPython code editor interface. Um, and this week I'm working on wrapping that up. And then I can take a look at the Raspberry Pi kernel pinning at some point. And after that, I'll start a new TFT product guide. And that's it for me. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. And last up is Neradoc. Uh, no mic. Okay. So for notes from Neradoc. Last week, uh, PR to have the board ID available in code and in bootout.txt. Uh, progress made on generating keyboard layouts for Adafruit HID from platform layouts. Uh, Windows using keyboard layout.info. Make your layout with uh, naradoc.me slash layouts and test it. I discovered last week's at network chuck video on bad USBs, which explains why at least five people came asking for layouts for the Pico Ducky this week. Um, and this week, uh, PR to CircUp to use the board ID to link to the board's downloads page to update CircuitPython. Add some of the generated layouts to the layout repo. For now, I prefer adding them as they are requested to have a minimum of testing for each. Uh, look into a way to somewhat automate the tests to layouts and looking for a good source of Mac layout data and implement the generator. That's it from Neradoc. All right, and that is also uh, the last of status updates. So we'll go to our final section uh, in the weeds which is a chance for us to have any longer form discussion about uh, any topics. And we have one topic this week from Jerry, uh, which we previewed a bit earlier. So take it away, Jerry, and give us more info. Yeah, so so this, what the user found was that it, you know, you know when you plug in a, this RFM9X feather wing on the NRF52840, um, and he tried to use battery power. It would just not. It would not find the device, the SPI interface. It, when you power up the or try to initialize the RFM Linux, it does a little sanity check where it goes to read a, it reads a version register, and it would fail. But, but it would work fine under USB. In fact, he found it would found, if he powered the battery, if he bypassed the battery pin and put the battery voltage into into um, the USB, it also worked. So it, it, it's just. It's not a power issue, it doesn't look like. Well, I don't know. No, no, no. So then what he found uh, was that if you look at the um, code in the RFM9X and the, in the SPI, I'm sorry, in the uh, core for the NRF52840, it has these SPIM devices where, in a, and, and for the NRF52840, there's a SPIM3 is enabled and it's the first one chosen. And the difference between it and the other two is that it, it defaults to a maximum baud rate of 32 megabits, um, but we're we're only using the initialization for the RFM is only at five megabits per second, so it's not clear why that would matter. Mm -hmm. And you know something different, but that one fails. So he tried and found what works is if you if you create a dummy SPI instance, just uh, you know, pick some pins and generate an SPI instance, and ignore it, and then generate the the one on the hard uh, the other one you want, uh, using the the main the board SPI devices uh, pins. 
it all works fine because it then it it bypasses that SPIM three and goes to one of the other ones. So that's about all I know. Um, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But and I know there were some issues with this SPIM three that Dan worked on a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So there may be something lurking in there. So just trying to get some clues as to you know how to troubleshoot it and what to look at. But. So you what what board is this? This is the NRF 52840 Feather Express. And if you put the battery power in through the USB, it works? I believe that he tried that. And that's it's putting only like 4.2 volts in. I think that was just a test to see if it was something to do with the, you know, the regulator coming yeah. through the charger. Doesn't seem to be the problem. I mean, it, it was, well, it's not clear. It might be. Uh, I looked at the schematics on it, and I can't. The only there is one there is one resistor size that's different on the 52840 from the Feather Express. Uh, I mean, from the M M4. Uh, I'm trying to remember, it hmm. was on the enable line. The the pull up or pull down on the enable is a little different. Hmm. Uh, it's not clear to me why that would matter. Again, yeah. and, and the fact that it works if you switch SPIMs, it, it all works, makes me think it's it's not a power issue. Yeah, I would be curious to see if you could replicate it on a separate board. Yeah, I, I, well, it doesn't happen for sure on the on the M4 or on an ESP32. I've been using those with batteries for a long, yeah, long time. Yeah, I, I guess I, I mean an, a, a different NRF board. I should be specific. Oh, uh, yeah, well, he tried it on both the uh, the Express and on the um, Sense, and they both failed the same way. Yeah, but, uh, they're yeah, super... More... They're super similar, though. Like, maybe yeah, even, like, yeah. like... Like, on one of Nordic's boards would be interesting. That's a good idea. Okay, that's a good thing to try. And um, I tried uh, using a breakout board instead of the feather wing, and that made no difference. They both behave the same. That's Yeah. I mean, I know, I know Spy M3 has had specific issues. Right. Um, I would be curious to see a salient trace of the Spy Bus. Okay. Um, All right, some ideas to play with, and it's just it's it's a puzzle. But uh, luckily, there's a you know clean workaround that is good for now. And can you? And I haven't tried any other SPI devices um, either. Uh, that'd be another thing I guess to uh -huh. try, because and again, I'm I'm just amazed it hasn't come up before. But I guess <laughs> that people try to to run it on a battery, right? Um, um, so it's, uh, I mean, I've used, I know I've, I've used the NRF 52840s with radios a lot, but mm -hmm. just, I never run on a battery before. Have, have you tried slower than the five megahertz clock rate as well? Uh, I have not. I think the original poster did try okay. changing with no impact, but, uh, okay. a bunch of things. Like that. So just yeah. wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. It's kind of a funky bug. <laughs> yeah, it definitely smells funky. I don't think it's. A high priority for me no absolutely not and I, um, I, there is an issue out there for it um right. but uh, yeah uh I, you know definitely put it on a, on a long milestone <laughs> yeah but, uh, but yeah know, it is just, it, uh, it is interesting yeah and in fact i i think i did want to do a project with that because the rfm 9x is the laura radio right right yeah. yeah, I haven't tried that. I, I also should try it with an RFM 69 to see if it behaves the same way. I suspect mm -hmm. it will. But uh, these are all, all things to in the queue to, to try out. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I, I briefly wanted to do a... And I think Dylan, she was looking at this combination of things recently, too. But okay. Maybe it was, it yeah. was something else. It was a Laura something that she was doing. I should try, well, I should try it with a, with a, with a, a, a Xenon, uh, a particle board. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that would be easy to test, and that would give you an idea. Yeah. Um, I've used them with the radios before, but never. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, to see, they'll have different power circuitry. Like the the mm -hmm. Feather NRF and the Feather NRF Sense are like, Lamore designed the Express and then just removed the S SWD and plopped in the sensors for the Sense. <laughs> like, yeah, they're going to be very similar. Right. Um, okay, lots well, of yeah. good things to try. So cool. Keep all right. I'll be uh, curious to he to hear what the the conclusion of that is, and I but I'm glad there's a workaround as well. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm gonna wrap up. Thanks, Jerry. Yep. Uh, all right. So this has been the Circuit Python Weekly. I'm scrolling down. 
<laughs> for August 30th, 2021. Thanks to you, everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython for Adafruit, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will re- be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, it will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter tomorrow. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting is not on Monday next week. It is on Tuesday, which makes it September 7th, 2021. So again, uh, next week's meeting is a day later. It is at the same time, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, but it, it, so it is 24 hours later than normal. Uh, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. Uh, to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the at CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. And with that, we hope to see you all next week on Bye. Tuesday. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.